Okay, so we're going to talk about the CD drive itself, or the DVD drive itself, which is right here. Uh, I've returned the uh, power board back to its lo lo normal location, just so you can see how the wires are routed. And I went ahead and removed the mounting screws for this drive just to reduce the amount of time it takes to, to get it out so we can explain it. So you can see the power for the motors comes through these two wires here. Uh, this chip controls these the, the electrical in impulses from uh, through these wires and tells the motors to drive the tray out, spin the spindle, or move the uh, laser back and forth. So there's three functions there and that requires three motors. So we should see three motors on the back. Let's see if we can remove these components here, or these uh, wires. And this wire here is the ribbon cable that takes uh, signals from the laser and brings it back to this board. It sends it back to the board as electrical impulses, which are encoded as ones or zeros. And then uh, this board converts those ones and zeros into an analog signal that your TV can read. It may also uh, have digital signals as well, but I believe this one just has analog out. And... So we're going to remove this ribbon cable, if we can. There we go. And what's, what's, there's some neat things about this ribbon cable. One is that it, it has a lot of different really fine wires in it, so it allows for a lot of different signals to be sent. And it has this stiff piece of plastic at the end, which allows it to be easily plugged into the, to the very narrow slot there. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the DVD drive itself. So um, first thing we're going to look at is the structure and, and the mechanical components. And then in the next video, we'll look at the laser and how it works. So in this part, let's flip it over here. We've got a number of different components. So we have three motors as expected. Remember the one motor here causes the spindle to, to turn around. That's this thing. Uh, this motor uh, actually drives these gears and causes the laser assembly to move. You can see it's shifting there, moving back and forth. And this motor causes the tray to move, slide out, and to move out from the actual player so that you can put your disc in and have it, have it spun around in red. So uh, there are a number of really fascinating engineering things on this. One of the things they have to do with uh, a board like this is in order to make, t it has to be, it's, it's super important that everything remains uh, very accurate and uh, that, that there's a, a large degree of precision because the disc is reading a very small or the laser is reading a very small uh, place on this disc and so in order for it to do that everything has to line up just right so there's a number of mechanical and electromechanical devices that make that possible so one of the things that that is done there is uh, that makes that possible is that this is a this has two closed loop control switches so an open loop control would be to say have this device move um, backwards and forwards and have it stop based on time so maybe our timer over here on the computer says okay I'm gonna let this go for five seconds in this direction and then when it gets to the end there it'll go five seconds in this direction well that's great except for the fact that the the gears have a little bit of slack in them just a little bit and over time walking backwards and forwards the uh, laser could get out of alignment uh, or the get off of where it should be out of its out of its position so the engineers have come up with an ingenious solution and that is that they have a closed loop control which means that there's a switch that gets gets hit every time that laser gets to the end so when when this um rack here when and this is called a rack and pinion when you have a round gear and 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 teeth on a straight edge like that that's a rack and pinion and it causes converts uh, rotational motion from the motor into linear motion and this small gear to big gear slows the motor's motion way down so you get a nice smooth slow motion it also increases the torque or the power of the motor the twisting force so uh, having all these gear ratios the way they are enable this to move more smoothly and slowly and with a little bit more control and power. And so when, when this uh, gets to the end of its, of its cycle, it hits this switch, pushes that switch down, and resets the entire device so that it knows, oh, hey, I'm at zero. And so it resets every time and you don't have to worry about it getting out of alignment. The next, there's another closed loop control switch right here. And so it's very, very important that everything remain in 
true alignment. And so that's what these switches are there for. So this resets every time the CD tray opens and closes. So whenever the tray opens and closes, it resets and lets the player know, lets the uh, motor controller and control board know over here, hey, uh, I'm at zero again, and so then it knows how to run through a sequence again to operate in exactly the way it's supposed to. Again, if you use time or some other way of controlling the motor, it, it may pull the device, it may pull the tray in too far, it may pull it hard against the other plastic and, and wear the motor out. But when you have that switch in there, you can reset it every time, keeps things running smoothly. Okay, and so we can also take a look at this metal bracket here that is holding the these two motors. This motor is the motor that turns the uh, spindle and this is again the motor that that moves the laser and so uh, they're mounted on this metal bracket which means that they're very stable and solid and the bracket has been made rigid by having these bends in it so it gives it a really strong sturdy um, uh, it's very strong and sturdy and rigid because of the the bends they add the they add stiffness to the metal and there's these two little rubber pieces here and these uh, screws and those rubber pieces actually allow the uh, drive plate um, this metal plate to drop down so the the plate actually pivots down like this um, when the DVD comes out and that's important because you can see that the the spinner head is actually above the the DV the the tray so if the DVD came in like this it would hit right there it wouldn't it wouldn't work so the tray has to swing down and it does that there's grooves along the side that allow the tray to swing down and out of the way so when this tray when the CD stops spinning this drops down and um, the DVD uh, can move out of the way and when the DVD gets put in it goes into right here and then the, this uh, bracket moves up and grabs the DVD and allows it to spin freely, so it's not it's not rubbing on the plastic. Uh, so that's how that part works. Um, again, the metal is really critical because it provides that rigid platform and helps to maintain that dimensional stability, which is required to keep everything just locked in place. And um, you can see that these these two metal bars here are, are tightly connected to this metal bracket, the stiffening bracket and uh, they allow for the, the laser uh, to track very smoothly across this edge. And you can see there's, there's one co contact point here and then there's a long edge that's on that point and that helps to maintain very consistent accuracy and, and smooth motion. These, these uh, rods are smooth and polished and again allow the laser to track in a very smooth pa pattern. Um, and you can see that this is an inject these are injection molded parts here and they, uh, the ribs here add stiffening and strength and complete the, uh, the DVD drive and allow you to also fasten all the different components together.